Jade Cargill versus uh, Tyler Valkyrie. Crowd was into this. Yeah, they were. Yeah. You know, I got to say that uh, as we review shows, you know, us pundits, sure, et cetera. I prefer the term expert, but go ahead. What have we said? We have said, dude, it's time. Can we beat Jade already? Like, it's just going on forever. But the fact of the matter is, and this is this is now twice I've gone to a live show, and Jade has come out, and the, the place just, they see her as a big fucking deal. And she got in the ring here, and there was heat from the before the opening bell. And Taya got in there, and it wasn't even like, you know, it was, by Jade's standards, it was a good match. It was one of her better matches. And they worked well together, and the people were super into it. And then, like, this is this is a um, this is a lesson here, everybody. I watched the Night of Champions show, and uh, Bianca Belair wrestled Asuka. And I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but Bianca Belair was the longest reigning WWE Women's Champion of the modern era, longer than Nikki Bella, longer than AJ Lee, longer than all of them. The longest reign, okay? She wrestled Asuka. Asuka blew the mist or whatever. She beat her. And that was it. And I heard nobody talking about it. It didn't get any bigger reaction than any other match on the show. Uh, you know, and the fact of the matter is, that should have been a big fucking deal that that long reign ended. But the reason it wasn't a big deal is because everybody has a fucking record. Gunther's got the longest reign. The Usos had the longest reign. Roman Reigns has a thousand day reign. Bianca Belair has the longest reign. It's like everybody has a fucking record, and so now they don't mean shit. Whereas in AEW, one, Jade Cargill was 60-0. and 0. And when they got in the ring and Taya hit her with that move, fuck me. The whole building rose to their feet, and they're like, ah! They couldn't even believe it. And she made the cover, and they go, one! They're screaming, two! And she kicks out, they go, ah! They were so into that fucking near fall. And then, of course, she hits the Jaden wins. And then, you know, he does the promo. Well, 60-0, and 0, we'll, we'll face anybody. And they hit Statlander's music, and right then the Holy fans shit. knew, dude, it's time. And they were so into Statlander. And they were so into this 40 seconds. And she pins Jade, and this fucking place went crazy. Like, they went crazy. And they're shooting confetti, and the people are standing up and screaming like it was a big deal. Is you know what? Like, they did a fantastic job with that Jade Cargill title reign. Whatever you think about, you know, went on too long, and, you know, she didn't sell for anybody or whatever. At the end of the day, it ended up being a big deal, and it fucking got Chris Statlander over as, like, a gigantic gigantic star because she ended that streak it was great yes yeah, Sean oh sorry the uh, curb stomp from Taya to Jade during oh, the first oh, match God. it looked hor- uh, it <laughs> yeah <laughs> she bounced her face off the mat with her foot it was <laughs> and bounced high but it's like she broke her neck bounced her head back <laughs> yeah uh, but what Brian's saying about Statlander stuff, like I wrote in all capital letters, uh, it's happening. She did it! Exclamation points! Like I was excited for this. I had goosebumps for this. It felt like a big moment. Yeah. And like, well done, like uh, AEW and that team putting all that together. It felt like something big happened. And I was a big fan of Statlander before, and seeing her come back, that was tremendous. So what do you do with Taya now? Well, I mean she she lost to her own move. You 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 do whatever anyone Shit else. Shit happens. What do you do with Time to go to Ring of Honor. Darby and Fight for that title. Jungle Boy and Sammy as we'll get to here shortly. This happens in wrestling. People lose matches. Sucks. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Which brings us to the match I've just spoiled, the four-way 
the AEW title, MJF versus Darby Allen versus Jungle Boy versus Sammy Guevara. What a great fucking match. Yep. Talk about something where everything happens for a reason. Like, every spot was a callback to something or a response to something or a set something else up later in the match. I would bet you anything that this thing was choreographed from start had to finish. Had to be. Had to be. But, you know, the thing, as we've noticed on, uh, it, you know, it's NXT does a lot of choreography as well, but you can you can very much tell the difference between professionals and amateurs when it comes to choreographing your matches. Because amateurs choreograph their matches, and it's blatantly choreographed, and they look like they're just waiting to, you know, like, try to remember what they what they have to do next. These guys, you know, the the way the match was structured and everything they did, it was clearly choreographed because you know that's it would be impossible to call a match that intricate, you know, just call it in the ring. Plus, it's four guys, but you know they pulled it off, and you know, as I noted in my Sports Illustrated column, the build for this left a lot to be desired. It uh, it helped Darby a little. It was just a wash for Sammy, and it actively hurt poor Jungle Boy. Badly. But, uh, you know, I watched this match, and when it was over, I thought, you know what? All of these men are better because of this match. This will help every single one of them. They are all bigger stars now because of this match that they had in the, well, it turned out to be the semi-main event of the pay-per-view. But it was that good. Like, it, it rehabbed all of them, and it made them all come off as big stars by the time this was over. I, I respect what you just said there, but Sammy Guevara was on another planet on this. He was so fantastic in this match. He made everything look effortless. He was – his moves were so crisp, and and he's got this really punchable face, but you couldn't help but like this kid by the time this was over. So, among all the other great callbacks they did, each guy used his mentor's move. Uh, you had Darby and MGF repeatedly trying to pin each other with headlock takeovers because that's still a, a burr in the saddle, as they say. And they referenced, referenced that many times in the promos leading up to this. But the key spot of the match is uh, MGF tried to grab his title belt and use that in the ring. And Jungle Boy stopped him and Sammy tackled him both. And when the smoke cleared, Darby was down. Sammy and MGF were outside the ring, and there's Jungle Boy holding that title belt. And he can use this belt and clobber a Darby Allen with it, who he's already said he doesn't like. And he can win this title. But is that the right way to do things? And he's looking at the crowd. He looks at the belt. He looks at the crowd, looks at the ref, looks at the belt. He looks to the sky, and he says, I can't use this. And he throws the belt down in frustration. And it cost him cost him in the end he, he did not win and uh, eventually mgf I think, it was, I think it was the ringer of belt shot but he had a gimmick shot on darby and he grabbed his head and he flipped him over and laid on him and pinned him with a headlock takeover again this is the second time i don't know if darby's gonna win the title from mgf with a headlock takeover but the day is coming where darby is going to pin mgf with a side headlock takeover and it is going to be awesome when this is done my thought was they should do that exact finish in this exact same ring with these exact same four men at Double or Nothing 2024. I'd well, be fine with that. You know, they... they uh... See, you know what? I, 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 I hate to say things like this because I don't want... I don't think they would actually do this in WWE because there's, there's a lot of predictions and everything like that that WWE changes and AEW doesn't. But you know what they could do is uh, I've been trying to figure out a way to end this... Uh, bidding war of 2024 storyline and uh if you're going to do that storyline and i should note by the way that at the post show press conference mjf said that you know when i when i talk about you know 2024 he goes this is not necessarily me saying that you know i want to leave here and go to wwe i may just want to retire uh, there's there's no competition left and, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, perhaps that day will come and I'm just going to walk away from this sport and do something else with my life. So, you know, one way or the other, they're doing this bidding war of 2024 where he's going to tease that he might leave. OK, and uh, what they could do is to make this storyline work, if you're going to do it, is obviously he's not leaving in 2024. 
I don't buy for a second that his contract is up in 2024. I think he re-signed a long time ago. I think this is all a storyline. So if you're going to do this storyline, somehow something needs to happen where he must re-sign. Okay? And so what that means to me is something humiliating where he is so determined to right this wrong that he must re-sign with AEW. And if they did a deal where, you know, it's double or nothing 2024, and the storyline is that his contract expires the Wednesday after double or nothing, if he wins, hey, he may take his belt and go elsewhere. He may retire forever. And, of course, at that show, he not only gets beaten for the title, but he gets beaten with a side headlock takeover. And he is so fucking furious to have been beaten with a side headlock takeover that, God damn it, he is going to re-sign to get his revenge on Darby Allen and get his championship back. So they could do that. How it works. Because at one point, some point, Darby is going to win with that move. It's it's inevitable. Before we move on, I would do want to note that at the same uh, same press conference, MGF called you, Brian Alvarez, a weirdo. <laughs> Yay! He was mad at me for smiling. Did you watch the press conference? No, I just heard he called you a weirdo. I thought, well, he is. He said, quit smiling at me, you weirdo. I thought, look at you. You can also find me at Vincent Verhey on Cameo. Oh, my God. I will send you a happy birthday wish. <laughs> I will send you a happy anniversary wish. Granny, you ever thought about being on Cameo? What is it? My computer, my front page is uh, Microsoft, and I go through there and see all kinds of lies and stuff like that and here you are you're doing a commercial and then you had me on there when i was ranting about wrestlemania did you get my permission oh okay wait, wait, what just, what just stop you're, for a second your front page is microsoft i guess i don't even know what that means your front page is microsoft what do you mean you go through there and see all the lies what does that mean well they have a whole bunch of stuff you know about this and that and this and that you know all kinds like of news. Like the news? News? I don't post the videos. I don't edit the videos. If you saw some video or some commercial, I have no idea what it is or where it came from or who edited it together. I'm sure it was someone from the site. It's not, no, Tony, it's not Tony, and it's not Dave, and it's not me. And it's not Vinny. He's busy doing cameos. That's right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.